Hey everyone, Big Mac here. Uh, today I decided I would do a quick tutorial on linear and exponential regressions. Um, I'll briefly explain what these things are, how we can use them uh, when we look at statistics and things, and we'll uh, finish off by looking at one particular example. So the setup is that we have a number of data points which we've obtained either experimentally or by some other means. So we see that the data points tend to go roughly in a line, but it's not perfect. I mean, if it were a perfect line, that'd be easy. But so since it's not exactly, you know, completely a line, we want to find the best model that gives us the closest uh, estimation of our line so that we can extrapolate it for uh, future or past uh, values. So the question is, what's the best criteria for such a line? Do we just want to connect like the first and the last endpoint? Do we want to try and get one that's in between all the others? Uh, you know, there's a diff number of different ways that we can define the best line, but the most common method is known as the least squares regression. So if we have our data y, um, and we want to fit that to a linear model, um, mx plus b, basically we want to find the smallest uh, differences between the square of the actual data point and its estimated data point. So we take our mx plus b, which is our estimated point, we subtract our actual value y, we square that because we, the point y could be either above or below, and since we're squaring it and we have multiple data points, uh, we want to add these all up. So the goal is to minimize this sum of squares. That way we know that we have the best possible fit uh, using this least squares regression. Uh, using um, a couple of different means, maybe some calculus or maybe just looking in a uh, introductory statistics book, uh, you'll see that there are a couple of formulas for uh, obtaining the values of your slope m and your intercept b uh, just based on the values of your data. So as you can see here we have this nasty looking formula for m which depends on the sum of the x's, the sum of the y's, the sum of the products of x, y, the sums of the squares of x, and the number of data points n. Uh, likewise b can be written as a function regarding the average value of x and the average value of y and the uh, obtained value slope m. So what if we wanted to do an exponential regression? Um, it's actually very much the same setup. We just have to take uh, one more step. So if we had an exponential equation in the form of y equals 8, a times e to the bx, what we can do is take the natural log on both sides. And since the natural log of a product is just the sum of the individual logs, uh, we basically get the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of a plus bx. So once again, we are in this uh, mx plus b type scenario, obviously well, capital B now this time, but basically we have this point slope intercept form again. So we can do the exact same analysis, figure out our slope b, and then figure out the value of natural log of a, so we can easily find a again. And we can plug, our, plug that back into our uh, original equation and see how that compares with our actual data values. So for an example, um, I thought I would look at Sir Eldrick the Fourth's uh, subscriber count as a function of the number of days since he started his channel. Um, congratulations Eldrick on a thousand, subs on a thousand subs. Uh, most of the data is provided by Eldrick himself in his comments as he was able to chronicle uh, his uh, subscriber count on, a, you know, on an occasional basis. There is not much information about the earlier days, unfortunately. However, we have a hearty number of uh, data points uh, more recently. So as you can tell, here's a quick graph of what we have. And it does seem to have a roughly linear function. So let's run our linear regression and see what we come up with. Uh, it turns out, for Eldrick's case, we have a linear regression of the number of subs, y, is equal to 3.1 times x, the number of days that have passed, uh, minus 127. You can take that minus 127 just to be like a inter or, yeah, intercept for us. So basically what this means is that on average, Eldrick is receiving mm, about three 
subscribers a day, maybe a little bit more. So, you know, the question is, how good is this model? And frankly, we don't know. But we can use this model to estimate uh, Eldrick's behavior in the future, you know, assuming current output, which may or may not be sustainable. The other possibility is if we look at it from an exponential version, um, in order to do an exponential regression, we're going to have to get rid of that zero, zero point, since we can't really take the log of zero, because that would be, you know, negative infinity. So that wouldn't really help us a lot. So, so if we uh, ignore that one point and we just use all the rest, uh, you can see here on the left that our uh, plot of x versus the natural log of y uh, also has a very linear pattern. So we could expect that an exponential regression may be a good model as well. So after running some numbers, it turns out that the original equation uh, for number of subs y is roughly 97.5 times each of the point zero zero seven one two x. Again, where x is the number of days that it's passed. So on the right, you know, plugging that back into uh, our original data values, uh, we can compare our, esti our estimated graph versus the actual data. So using these regressions, you know, a number of questions we can ask. Uh, how long will it take Eldrick to uh, reach another 1,000 subscribers? Uh, if we use the linear model, you know, we have a roughly, we have a constant slope, so we can just do 1,000 divided by 3.1. And that'll take us about 322 days, or 10 and a half months, more or less. Uh, if it turns out the exponential model is uh, better suited, um, Eldrick will get another 1,000 subs within uh, three months, which is very exciting. Uh, of course, which one is more correct? We don't know. Maybe neither of them are a good example. We have no idea. A number of things can happen in the future that we can't predict. So, But we can at least use this as an estimation for how things will go. All right, this is Big Max saying later.